Okay, so episode two of Pi News. Uh, I've just been going through uh, all the things that I found in the last sort of week or so uh, that I thought maybe I wouldn't make a whole video on, but I thought they were interesting and uh, and worth pointing out. So one of the first things I saw uh, on Reddit was this results of 20,000 Raspberry Pi storage benchmarks fastest. So uh, if you click on it, uh, well, you can go down it and, it and they tell you a bit about it. Um, but uh, the main bit is here, and I'll put a link in the description of this. So the top performing device he found was the NVMe Samsung 970 Evo Plus, and uh, the the secure card, uh, well, it was an A2 card, uh, 128 gig uh, SanDisk Extreme. When you look through the test, it works on uh, the average score, and so in some cases, you know, like this SanDisk Extreme Pro, which I found to be an excellent card, one of the slowest scores was really low, uh, and I guess that affects the overall average, because when you look at the fastest score, so 2289, uh, actually it's one of the fastest ones in the list. So, uh, yeah, I need to, I mean, obviously you can never get this 100% right, and loads of people are doing it, and loads of different systems, and there's a piece of software to do it, and I think I've done this before. Uh, I've got a Samsung Evo Plus in my Pi at the moment, so, Let's just hit return. I don't know how long this takes, so I'll cut it out if it takes a long time. And we'll see where mine comes on that list. Okay, so I've just done the test and I've submitted it and I've added it to the list. And uh, if we look at the top under latest after I refreshed, it is here. Although it does say it's a 512. <laughs> I don't know why it says it's a 512. Um, but, uh, but it says 966. Now if I go to SD card and yeah look the fast I don't know what don't know what's going on with these scores 5874 that is super super fast I have got one of these uh, I think I've got one of those as well but uh, but yeah if you want to check it out it's just interesting that it's a whole whole load of figures you can also check out my uh, speed tests on uh, cheap SSDs and SD cards and USB sticks and things like that on my channel. So the next thing that came to me was uh, a message and uh, it's from Nigel Brown and I thought this was interesting so he said thanks for the great info regarding the Yukon and the SATA to USB 3.0. When mine turned up from Amazon I had to pull them apart to see what was inside. Then I decided to 3D print a lid for my flirt case. Thank you, let me know if you would like the STL. So this is what it looks like. So if I put a picture beside it of, of how the two products look, but he's taken the uh, SSD out, just put it into the SATA cable, which was obviously made it a lot smaller, and he's put it into a case. And then it sits very nicely on top of the pie like that. I thought it was really good. I was, I was really quite impressed with that. It's, uh, it's certainly a neat way of doing it. Okay, so if you watch my channel a lot, you'll know that uh, I cover Windows 10 quite a bit, and uh, an important part of that is uh, Amir's Discord, uh, which is uh, is a really vital piece of information, and also it's where everybody gets together to discuss things. They did manage to get 8 gig of RAM supported on Windows 10. Uh, the only thing is that you have no USB or no way of controlling it. So it does run. Uh, and you could run uh, a program, but you have to put it in the startup folder, so when Windows starts up, it automatically launches it, but then you've got no way of controlling it. But it's all steps. It's all steps in the right direction. I mean, it did say to mention uh, Mario B and also Marsan uh, in the Discord who have done great work on this. And so, well, keep an eye on that because getting the full 8 gig of RAM would be amazing for Windows 10. So I've also had some companies contact me. Um, Big Tree Tech was one of them. I see they sell through Amazon and they do various different products. Uh, and they've got a new screen uh, that they wanted me to have a look at. And uh, they didn't really send me a lot of information in the first email as to what it was. So I, I inquired about, can you give me some images and specifications? Didn't get a lot of specifications on it, uh, but I did get this image. And it does say that it's a, a five point touch screen. So I thought, Definitely that would be something I would like to have a look at. Um, and so I've responded to them and said, yes, please uh, send me one of those and I'll, I'll certainly have a look at it in a video. The other company that contacted me was uh, Seed uh, with three E's. And uh, it was this product they wanted me to have a look at, the Wii, the Wii O terminal. And uh, it's an interesting device. It's uh, It's got buttons on the top for controlling, but it also has its own card slot, its own little USB slot. It's got a two and a half inch screen, I think it was. Um, 
and I couldn't really see why I would necessarily use that. It's not my kind of side of the pie. I don't get into the maker stuff and the programming very much at all. There's enough content for me covering games, operating systems, getting things to work. But would it be the sort of thing that I should be putting on my channel? I, I'm not sure um, because I, I can't spend hours and hours uh, sort of working out programming to be able to get it to do small tasks. But is there going to be stuff that's going to be pretty straightforward that I can get up and running and it would it would appeal to the masses. So let me know on that. I haven't responded to them yet, but I plan to very soon. Uh, I'm not sure which direction to go on that. And the last bit of news was that Salvador from PyLabs, who make Twister OS, uh, actually got hacked the other day. Um, and uh, it was his YouTube account. And apparently they started posting Bitcoin videos and he was locked out of his account. And he did manage to get back into it and it's all up and running, everything's fine now. Um, but uh, I did ask him if he had two-factor authentication switched on and he said that he didn't, but he does now. So it's definitely a message to always have two-factor authentication on your email account your if you've got a YouTube account. Um, so a, a lot of it's all linked together. So my Gmail account is a YouTube account and, you know, although I keep them separate, but I do have two-factor authentication on it. Uh, it was he was hacked on Monday. Uh, he said he almost lost the channel and he says, yeah, suddenly someone had changed my password. My channel was posting Bitcoin stuff. Because now I have co-priority, my buddy kicked me quickly. So luckily, uh, the other person on his account uh, saw the activity going on, told him straight away, and they could get straight on it. So it could have been a lot worse. But uh, yeah, just to, just to mention there uh, for Salvador, check out his channel. He, he does some great work. There's all sorts of interesting things that come along there. There's some brilliant videos on there. And I get a lot of useful information from it. Okay, so I uh, hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.